I had COVID. Isn't that better than getting the vaccine? Having COVID is not better than having the vaccine for three major reasons. First off, you have to survive COVID. About 2% of people don't survive it at all, and in certain risk categories, that number is much higher. Two is that the level of, of protection you get from having natural immunity isn't as good as having the vaccine. And third, if you've got the vaccine, the level of protection you get lasts a lot longer than if you've had simply natural infection and immunity from, um, from COVID. So I've heard it's actually better to go out, get COVID, uh, and then treat afterwards using vitamins and supplements. Is that true? So that's a great question. Right now, we still don't understand when someone gets COVID-19, if they're going to get very sick or they're just going to have a mild illness that you could treat with just vitamins and supplements. So we recommend that everyone gets a vaccination for COVID-19 to prevent you from getting sick in the first place. So if the vaccine works so well, why are there breakthrough infections? Right, so this vaccine or the vaccines we have for COVID-19 are very safe and effective, but like with any vaccine, it's not 100%. And so there will be cases and times when individuals who are fully vaccinated will become infected and actually get symptomatic disease. And that's expected, but the disease they do get is much less severe than getting COVID-19 itself. The important thing to remember is that even if there is a breakthrough infection, it's much less severe than if you hadn't gotten vaccinated. And guess what? These vaccines are more than 90% effective. That's better than most vaccines we have out there. And I played sports growing up, so if you think about a quarterback with a passer rating of greater than 90%, or a basketball player with a free throw percentage greater than 90%, that is amazing. That's somebody you're gonna to wanna to have on your team all the time. So I've had COVID, should I wait to get the vaccine? No, so if you've had COVID-19 and you've recovered from the illness, you should go ahead and get vaccinated. The reason is that we don't know how long immunity lasts from natural infection, and getting that vaccination helps boost your immunity so that you're even more protected going forward. So what happens if I don't get that second shot? Well, the second shot really is critical. In fact, what we have known really from other vaccines that we've developed is that typically vaccines require two or even three shots. So if you get only that first shot, you get a little bit of protection, it's true, but you don't get the full deal. So, you know, it's kind of like buying a car without tires. When you really want the full deal, you gotta get the second shot. So I've read that doctors are curing people with the ivermectin. Uh, why can't I just do that? Well, I've used ivermectin a lot as an infectious disease doctor but I've used it to treat people with worm infections, worms in their guts. If I have somebody with high blood pressure, I'm not gonna treat them with a cancer drug or a drug for diabetes. It simply won't work. Plus, that drug will have certain side effects. So taking a drug that's meant for worms and trying to use it for a virus, by the way, we've tested that as well, even though we we're pretty sure it wouldn't work, it simply doesn't work and it's dangerous because it has side effects as well. So it just seems like uh, the development of these vaccines are just way too fast. I just don't trust it. Why should I? So that is a really important question and a concern shared by many people across this country. The development of the vaccine did happen very quickly and much more quickly than we're used to seeing vaccines be developed. The reasons for that are a couple. One, this vaccine was really didn't start um, a couple of months ago. The work that led into the development of this vaccine really started years and years ago with scientists working on viruses similar to SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID-19. In addition, the US government really helped support our pharmaceutical partners to do a lot of the manufacturing for the vaccines before the vaccines were even ready. And the final piece is we were studying these vaccines in a time where there were tremendous numbers of infections with COVID-19. And when we test a new vaccine, we compare the number of infections in people who got the experimental vaccine to those who didn't get it. And so if nobody gets sick, we can't really tell did the vaccine work or not. But when we have many, many infections like we did early on in the epidemic, it allows us to do those studies more quickly. 
Ultimately, the Department of Defense has confidence in the decision by the U.S. Uh, Food and Drug Administration that these vaccines are both safe and effective for our service members and their families. What is this vaccine made of? I've been kind of concerned with the safety. No, that's a great question. Um, and I think it really became important because most people are used to vaccines that are made with what are called proteins. It's a standard flu vaccination that you might get. So the American people were really kind of surprised to hear about these mRNA vaccines. They were considered relatively new. The truth is mRNA vaccines have been in development for well over 10 years. It just was a perfect storm of that technology being mature enough to turn to COVID. And the exciting thing about mRNA technology is it's super fast uh, to produce these vaccines. They're very safe. They can't give you the disease itself. They can be scaled up and so billions of doses can be made. And the critical thing is we found out by doing clinical trials in tens of thousands of people and then following literally tens of millions of Americans right now for, for long-term safety, we know that these vaccines are not only effective, but they're safe. I heard the uh, mRNA vaccines will give people autism. Is that true? You know, the COVID-19 vaccines have been perhaps more intensely monitored from a safety standpoint than any other vaccine to date because of how quickly they were distributed and how many people have taken them over such a short time. Despite all of that monitoring, there's been no evidence and no link between the COVID-19 vaccine and autism. We look at the effects of these vaccines in tens of thousands of people before we put them into the general population. Tens of millions of people have gotten the vaccine, and we've seen no higher rate of autism among people who have gotten vaccines. Millions and millions of dollars, millions and millions of uh, records were looked at, studies were done, and again and again, we don't see any evidence that any vaccines cause autism, and particularly any of the COVID vaccines causing autism. If I get the COVID vaccine, will I catch COVID? So the vaccines that we currently have for COVID-19 can't give you COVID. Two of the vaccines have mRNA, which is really a recipe for the cells in your body to make a protein um, that is really just a piece of the protein that decorates the outside of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is the virus that causes COVID-19. That in and of itself can't give you an infection to give you COVID-19. What some people do experience after vaccines are aches and kind of a feeling of fatigue and sometimes even a slight fever. What all of those signs are, are really your immune system noticing that there's something that doesn't belong there. And those are the reactions that our immune system has both to a protein that's foreign as well as an infection. But it doesn't mean that you have COVID-19. Are there microchips in the COVID-19 vaccine? No, there's actually a lot of concern that I've heard about things in the vaccine, including microchips and, and toxins. And there are, in fact, none of those in any of the vaccines that are available for use in the United States or elsewhere around the world. The FDA has very stringent criteria about what can be included in vaccines and how they are tested for safety and effectiveness. So again, there are no microchips or any other toxins in these vaccines. So a lot of people have been hearing that. And I think it probably comes from some of the words that we scientists use to describe the vaccines. In particular, the words lipid nanoparticle that were uh, part of what is contained in the mRNA vaccine. What a lipid nanoparticle means, I'll break down the meanings of the different words. Lipid basically means fat. And nanoparticle, although it sounds like a science fiction word, really just means a very small little thing. So really what a lipid nanoparticle means, it's not a science fiction microchip, but it is a little teeny tiny fat droplet that we use to encase the mRNA um, molecules that comprise the vaccine. I've heard the vaccines have toxic ingredients. Is that true? No, uh, these vaccines do not have toxic ingredients in them. Again, the FDA has very strict criteria about what vaccines can contain and how they're tested for safety and effectiveness. The vaccines that are available have been through rigorous testing, have been administered to millions of people at this point, uh, and they are not uh, containing any sort of toxic materials.
So supposedly there is a new COVID-19 treatment pill. Why can't I just get that if I get sick? Well, first of all, you're playing with the dice if you're going to not get vaccinated and take chances on getting sick. You might get sick, uh, you might get infected with COVID and you might get sick, you might get real sick. These pills are effective, but they're only so effective and only if you take them in time. I'm planning to start a family. My spouse and I are worried that the vaccine will affect fertility and prevent us from getting pregnant. So during the original clinical trials of the, these vaccines, uh, there were plenty of people who received the vaccines and then went on uh, to become pregnant and have successful deliveries. And since that time, there's been at least two studies, in, which included over 5,000 people uh, who were able to become pregnant after receiving these vaccines. So uh, yes, uh, this, these vaccines are, are safe and effective in individuals who are seeking to become pregnant. Among the millions of people that have gotten the vaccine, we've been tracking plenty of people who've gotten pregnant after getting the vaccine. There are studies that show there is no risk of infertility from the vaccine, whether it be from the woman or from the man. So my wife is pregnant. If she gets the vaccine, will it hurt the baby? Would it be better for her to get vaccinated after the baby is born? Yeah, so the safety of vaccines, especially in pregnant women, is a very legitimate concern and something everyone should be uh, you know, interested in finding out the facts about. Uh, the CDC just recently strongly recommended that pregnant women get vaccinated in order to protect themselves and their unborn babies from COVID-19. The reason is that getting the disease, getting COVID-19, is a much higher risk to the health of the mother and the baby than getting vaccinated. Vaccines remain the best way to prevent COVID-19 and therefore protect moms and babies. So speaking as a father of two children, and I can tell you that parents want to protect their children and mothers and fathers want to protect that growing fetus. The best way to do that during the COVID pandemic is to get vaccinated. The impact of COVID on a woman who's pregnant on the developing fetus is more devastating than if a woman is not pregnant. If you want to protect a mother who's pregnant, if you want to protect that growing fetus, the vaccine is a much better way to do it than putting off that decision and taking the risk of having COVID during that time. So I've heard that the vaccine can affect menstruation. Will the vaccine negatively affect how my daughter develops and her future fertility? So a lot of things can you know, impact menstruation in women. Um, receiving vaccines, certainly becoming ill, other factors um, can alter the menstrual cycle. But that doesn't mean that those are negative effects and that they affect fertility. Uh, the studies that have looked at fertility and these vaccines have shown that they do not have an impact on fertility and in fact are much safer than getting COVID-19 itself. I have daughters about that age as well. And those were questions I asked when I thought about whether or not my daughter should get the vaccine. There's no impact on fertility or on long-term effects for menstruation. How do I know which COVID vaccine information sources are accurate? So at the end of the day, you have to have faith in where you're getting your information from. For the United States government, the Centers for Disease Control has a great website that's easily digestible, written in plain English, and addresses a lot of the myths, the facts, um, the benefits, some of the risks of vaccines. And I personally go to that site um, all the time to, uh, to get information, even though I'm a vaccine developer and a physician scientist myself. Now, some of you out there may find that a difficult place to go for one reason or another. So I would strongly urge you to talk to your faith leaders and to talk to you to other folks in your community and to try to get um, input from people that you trust. Certainly your, um, your healthcare provider, your faith leader, those are other critical people that I think that you should talk to. As you probably know, we're trying to reach out to the community and engage the community in these kinds of discussions because for some people listening to the government or listening to a faith leader, that may not hit the spot. So I would suggest you cast a wide net, talk to a lot of people, but rely on sources that you really know and trust 
and know are on your side and are your advocates.